All right, we are excited about our next guest, yes. actor, director, and writer, Lake Bell. She is known for a 2013 film, In the World, that won Best Screenplay at the Sundance Film Festival. It's all about a vocal coach who wants to do voiceovers wow. for movie trailers. Bell continues to explore our voices in her new audiobook, Inside Voice, My Obsession with How We Sound. She speaks with several people that have iconic voices, including Jeff Goldblum, Susie Essman, and Drew Barrymore. Take a listen to Drew. I don't know if this is the same for anyone else. I don't know the sound of my own voice. Can anyone know the sound of their own voice? Can they actually audibly, scientifically hear themselves? So I get what everybody's talking about because there's a consistency and theme of the voice, but I don't know what my voice sounds like. First on CBS Mornings, Lake Bell joins us right now. How are you doing? Thanks for having Good. me. Good. Of course. I just want to say my, with my kids, I do here. switch switch. That, do you know about that? What you take that? all the ca Halloween candy and then you switch it out. It's like a payment, kind of like oh. the, yeah, oh. with the tariff thing. Oh. I like that. So anyway, that's and a do hot you do tip. that with the resting witch face? <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Okay. So um, I, I love the audio book. Thank you. Um, yes. Because it starts off um, very comically, um, and we get to hear different um, times when you were using your voice, um, and you're quite embarrassed, but you have fun with it. So when did your obsession start about how I your mean, voice sounded? I, I've been categorically obsessed with the human voice from a very young age. I think it was a great procrastination tool when I was a kid. It was like, okay, like, it's time to go to bed, and then I'd be like, but what about <laughs> some wild voices, you know? And so then it made adults laugh, which then meant I didn't have to go to bed, and then when you make adults laugh, it's very indelible. I think that's it. That that's makes a, that's you... That's the key. Yeah. Ooh, but that's the thing, like, number one, I've known you, but I didn't know that you, what you can do with your voice. I'm like Nate. I said, I'm just going to listen to one episode. I ended up listening to all five because you're Poison Ivy HBO. Let's hear. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Well, Poison Ivy, I have to just be very clear. I use my own voice to, mm -hmm. to create a lot of characters. So yeah. it's really Poison Ivy. She's very naughty. Yeah. There's just a lot of... Mm -hmm. A little colorful language. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cheryl okay. with the southern accent. Um, Cheryl is more like this, <laughs> and she's Cheryl. Um, but then, when I, the one I'm most proud of is um, being the omniscient voice of the Apple iPhone I know, 6S. I know, I like that. Mm -hmm. Let's hear it. Which, again, but Gail, it's not right. like, you know, it's gonna sound like me, but it's like Apple iPhone 6S. You know, it's mm, like... Boy, sultry. It, it's kind of sultry, but it's like me with a sprinkle of sultry. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's not far off. But, like, this is something I never thought about, because I'm like, Drew, I never thought about my voice either. But you said we pay attention to other things in our life. We don't pay attention to our voices, and we should. Why? I think our voice... Well, we don't realize it's a roadmap of everything we've endured. It's traumas, whether you, you smoked a lot in your 20s, yes. you can hear it. You know, maybe you had a step parent who emulated a certain sound, like Howard Hughes, or maybe you lived in three different boroughs when you were growing up. It, it really is kind of this incredible tapestry of everywhere you've been, yeah. you know? So, so well said. I agree completely. It's amazing. Yeah, where are you from? Uh, from Maryland, Maryland, Florida. Okay. And it definitely comes out in the way I say water. <laughs> Forward with no R. Usually it's the it's the vowel sounds. But what's cool about it is yeah. that we're it's so pliable. The voice is like in constant state of evolution, you know? Mm. And even with your jobs as like being in the news media, how you sound when you've had, you know, maybe a couple drinks or you're chilling or right. whatever it is, right? right? You're gonna you're gonna style shift a little bit, mm -hmm. right? I wanna I wanna fact check you a little bit here. You've never thought about your voice. You are a professional broadcaster. You are in the but voice I haven't business. thought but, but I what about like think about it when right you first now. Yes, thank you, Nate. When you first started. Do you I feel like it? Let's, no, I didn't think about it. You know what? Voice. Tony, play, do you have something? Uh, you know what? I oh, so God. happened to have something. Okay, great. I'm glad you brought this up. This is such a setup I see coming. Please roll the tape. Please roll the tape. Please roll the tape. If you're an early morning yeah, yeah. radio listener, Bob uh, Steele uh, is probably no stranger. Uh, On at 5:30, he's as reliable as clockwork and has oh been for decades. God. But as Channel 3's Linda Carnes reports, Does, so okay, stop so it. A lit, so Does uh, that girl still have ball, a job? You look, you look incredible. <laughs> I, all I'll say is it's a little bit pitched up, right? So usually after, you know, as we grow up, I mean, I've had two kids, so my my voice has hormonally changed after birth. But you know right? what, like, what's so interesting about that is I actually thought I sounded good. You listen to it there, and I, I cringe when I hear that. I've been Why? Why do you cringe? Because it, it does sound very <laughs> high pitch. It doesn't sound there's professional. The, there's the news cadence in it that, in it, you know, yeah. local news cadence. You still sound like you. 
You do sound like of, But you were saying sometimes that you actually lower your voice because if you look, I thought this was interesting on your tapes. Yeah. If, if people lower their voice, it does make them sound more authoritative, more well, credible. I mean, that's right. That's up for discussion and for argument. But it, I find that I do lower my voice a bit when I want, in this setting, certainly, right? I want you to take me seriously. I want you to listen to my words. I want to wield some kind of authority, right? right. And so I do find myself leaning a little bit heavier on that. As opposed that to the time. sexy baby voice, which I find Listen, really I knew irritating it would for a lot up. of people. I knew it would come up. Um, What's the sexy baby voice like? Look, all I'll say is, it's something that I really am proud of. Um, <laughs> and, it's, and it's not, it doesn't evoke that you're less than or you're like not smart. Yeah. 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 But it is up talk and it's fry yeah. and it's pet. It's fry. Oh, yeah. But the thing that, the, this is what I thought was interesting. In yes. your tape you said, everybody should say the words, and I actually did this, authoritative mm -hmm. marzipan. marzipan. Yes. And why should we say that phrase? Well, look, I'm a voice nerd, okay? I really like the sound of people's voices. And yeah. when you say authoritative marzipan, mm -hmm. it's hitting so many different vowels and right. shapes and consonants that in any accent and dialect, it always garners a delightful result. Authoritative so. marzipan. I thought I heard Chris Rock on that. What's his voice like? Uh, he's, I hear it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, pretty good. <laughs> it's very distinct. Yeah, very yeah, distinct. Very distinct. All right, very very distinct. Very distinct. thank you yeah. so much. <laughs> Inside Voices on sale now wherever you buy your audio books. <laughs> you are delightful, and the book is You are delightful. so good. Oh, like, so good. Being here.